Hey there, comic book friends. I'm Travis. And I'm Ethan. And this is... Monster Comic Review. That's right. And this is comics for two weeks ago, I believe. Um, yes. Because there's five weeks in this month, it's kind of weird. The ne mm -hmm. Our next review will just have just a few comics in it because yeah. really not a whole lot got released in that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so you go ahead and start. Okay, first up we have Batman number nine. What'd you think? Part of the Night of the Owls. This is the one where he's in his big suit. Uh -huh. Beating the daylights out of a whole bunch of them. Yeah. Well, they're kind of beating the daylights out of him. They kind of overwhelmed him at some point. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't as um, kick butt as the last issue. It was fun just seeing Bruce as Bruce dancing around just, all the places. Yeah, just walking around yeah. beating everybody yeah. up. That's uh, cool. Um, but no, I, I mean I like this one too. Um, I think it's still a good, it's still a good event event book. Um, um, there are some funny bits in it. And um, yeah, I mean, as a whole, I, I liked it. Um, you know, towards the end of it, you know, he um, meets up with the other, the politician that was kind of trying to, you know, help out um, with Gotham. the new city. Right. Um, you know, basically gives a message to Bruce to keep fighting the good fight. Uh huh. And um, and um, yeah, he pretty much chases everybody out of Wayne Manor, doesn't he? Yeah. By the time it's all said and done. Uh -huh. And then there's the little bit of a backup issue, which tells the story of a of Alfred's dad uh -huh. and um, a Talon from that time period. Uh -huh. So I wonder now if they're going to somehow imply that the Talons were somehow responsible for his parents' death at some point. I hope they don't do that. Yeah, I hope they don't yeah. change that that piece of that mythos. Mm -hmm. That kind of I think untouchable would, thing would be really wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It would be like saying that Superman was a mutant instead of an alien. Yeah. It would just be wrong. There's some things. Uh -huh. I mean, you can change some stuff, but there's some fundamental things you just... I mean, they're beyond set in stone? I, th I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, um, no. I, I enjoyed it. I guess I don't have a lot to talk about it, but yeah. I did enjoy it. Um, what do you think? I, I like this issue. There's not much to say about it for me that you didn't already say. Um, the backstory was um, interesting. It was kind of cool. And then, yeah. The um, guard dog was kind of funny. Yes. That was... <laughs> this is dinosaur stuff. At <laughs> any rate. Um, yeah, it was an okay book. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I don't know that I wasn't... I mean, it's been a little while since I read, the, read yeah. that issue, but I don't know, I wasn't that excited. I mean, I wasn't like riveted to it. It was cool. Yeah, but, but they're leading up to an issue that hopefully will rivet us, considering the fact that it sounds like he's going to take out the... Oh, challenge. he's taking it to them. That's how um, it ends with him basically going, they came to my house, now I'm going to theirs. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that'll be interesting. Him um, going back down to the labyrinth. Is that a good idea? I don't know, maybe. He got, he got pretty messed up the last he time. He got pretty messed up, and then he messed everybody else up. Right. right. The talents come down, they're like, oh, yep, we're going to brag in your face about how awesome, and then he beat somebody up. Yeah. So. Anyway, any rate, um, so I would give this a three out of three? Yeah, three. Yeah? Three for five. Mm -hmm. Three for five. Why do I always do that? I don't know. Yeah, I always want to give it a perfect score or whatever lame amount of points I give it. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, so next we're going to talk about um, Birds of Prey number nine. This has got your new artist and travel foreman on it. What do you think? Um, I like this issue. I like this challenge. He was kind of cool. His costume was a little mixed up. And I was trying to figure out what he was really based off of, but I don't, I don't suppose it has to be based off of anything. I think he's more of a like a steampunk talent kind of a thing. Yeah. Didn't, didn't he seem to be? Uh-huh. Yeah. It was cool how he saw um, Ivy and... Um, not Ivy, um, Katana and Black Canary. That was cool seeing them as the as monsters and how he's how he feels that he's actually protecting the city. Right. Cause yeah. Right. Um. And then um. Yeah, it's kind of creepy looking. Yeah, he's kind of he. Yeah, he's kind of delusional in the fact that um, he definitely. I, I think this is the first time the first one of the books that shows shows. Through their eyes, them looking at the world through yeah. through the talons' eyes, uh -huh. and through his eyes, they're all set in kind of a weird Victorian esque uh -huh. kind of a and they're all yeah. strumpets. Uh huh. They're all strumpets, and I mean, yeah, he's his katana is his only thingy. Yeah. Yeah. So he yeah. definitely he definitely feels that what he's doing is for the greater yeah. good. And katana was kind of interesting in the fact that she's sitting there saying, "Hey, look, my my husband is telling me that these things don't have souls. Yeah. So let's she's, just let's just do them in or he whatever. Doesn't have a soul. Right. They think that um and they think that um um poison ivy is is something really bad's happened to her. Uh huh. You know, and then she shows, she shows up. up and she's she all defreezes him. They're all badass and she's pretty. 
end up wiping him out by throwing him in a um refrigerated in, in a meat locker mm -hmm. train. Yeah, along with oh, along with Ivy, is Ivy's like saying, that, "Don't forget to tell me." Yeah, don't forget to tell me. Oh, yeah. that was that was cool. pretty cool. Um, the art is interesting with Travel Foreman on it. I don't know. I don't know. There's some some pictures look really cool and some of them look strange. Him doing normal people look strange and so those moments where the people don't have to be people sometimes yeah. to me look kind of strange. Although watching him do Ivy on the other hand that yeah, well, was... Yeah, well of course because really her vines just look twisted and all out. Yeah. But I guess he's only on this. I just read that he's only going to be on it for three issues and then he's off of it and somebody else is on it but we don't know who yet so it'll be interesting to see what. Hopefully the artist is good. Yeah. I like this book. Mm -hmm. I, 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 mean, I, I enjoy I like the Birds of Prey book. Um, it's not selling well though. Oh really? Yeah. Its sales actually have dropped lower than its pre-52 sales now. Wow. Which isn't good. Yeah. Um, but hopefully they keep it around for a while. Mm -hmm. I like it. I, I like it too. I just, just don't think people... Um, I think it's off the radar kind of a thing. Yeah. Now, is it exceptional? No. But I think it's really enjoyable. At any rate. Um, what would you rate this one? i give it a weak four strong three. i give it a three. I give it a three. Um, I did like this Night of Owls. I like the character. They do a good job of making him something interest, interesting and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not just there. Um, it seemed this did this issue did seem somewhat disruptive to the regular plot that was going on. Yeah, we had the because old issue. the last issue ended with um, Canary going, "Yeah, I actually did kill my husband." Right. Uh, right. So and, and so this was kind of disruptive. I mean, she was kind of off her game because of the whole thing going on, but it just felt like it was. Just suddenly interrupted, um, and I mean, they tried to justify it, but it did feel like it interrupted this storyline. Yeah, a bit, definitely. But, but anyway, okay. Real. What's um, next? next up, we have Catwoman, um, issue nine. Another Night of the Owls. Huh? Yeah, more Night of the Owls because we found out that they were kidnapping the Streetwalkers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was an okay issue. Yeah, I thought um, so. Yeah, I mean it was it was another it was another interesting um, interesting tale. Um, um, Gillian March is back on the art, which works for me. Yeah, I like him as the artist. Um, yeah, I, um, and this owl was a little bit different than all the other owls. I like this owl. I love the fact that he's he has made mistakes in the past as a talent right. because he feels honor bound yeah. to do certain things. A good job. Like, yeah, and at one point he loses one of his daggers and they've collected an entire the entire five set of his daggers that he's lost. Right. So that So he was, lost honor because of that. Mm -hmm. And he feels yeah, and that's when they decided that they were going to silence him and then they resurrected him and to take out the penguin so he could restore his honor or whatever. Right. And then Catwoman Catwoman explained the whole Knivey thingy, so. She figures out the obsession. Yeah. And it's like, hey, here, here, have the knives. Yeah. You can have the knives, just let the girls, let the rest of us go. And, uh huh. And so he thinks he can get honor bound by that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Then it goes to show that the, 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 um. And then the penguin shoots him in the head. Right. The court of owls are kind of crappy. Yeah. I mean, they don't treat their employees very well. No. I mean, you lost that knife, and so they're like, oh, you dishonored us, and, you know. Yeah. Whatever, and kind of. Mm -hmm. Chuck them on us. So yeah, it actually had, it actually had an interesting story. It, it did, it did something with the talent that was in its book. Yeah. To make it kind of interesting too. Uh -huh. yeah. So I enjoyed it. It was I it's another one of those comics I'd give it a three out of five. Yeah, three out of five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, next we're gonna talk about a non Night of Owls book. <laughs> Blue Beetle number nine. This one happens to be guest starring some Guardians of the Lantern. Yay! This book was so much better and it didn't suck. Yeah. And it felt like I mean, I know the whole point of the New 52 is to draw new people and start off new stuff and stuff, but it felt like the old Blue Beetle and Blue Beetle, and that's not a bad thing. That's that's a good thing, mm -hmm. um, because the old Blue Beetle Blue Beetle was just great. So this, you know, the, they're beating the crap out of Blue Beetle because his scarabs are like Who's they? the lanterns. Because right. the scarabs are like <gasps> lanterns. Ah! Because, you know, the Reach and the Lanterns obviously don't mix well considering the fact that the Reach are trying to conquer everybody. Right. And the Lanterns are peacekeepers, so... Well, at least the Green Lanterns are. Yeah, the Green Lanterns. Um, 
So yeah, um, as Bleez, as we find out that the Red Lantern's name is, is getting ready to absolutely pound in Blue Beetle's face. She's got her fiery blood breath thingy ready to pretty much take him out. Right. And Scarab's like, and he's like, Scarab, help me. And Scarab's like, registering metabolic arousement. And he's like, what? Registering metabolic arousement. And he's like, I am not aroused. And that just totally stops Bleez in her tracks. She's, she's just like, like what? what? She's like, she's, uh, she stands over and she's like, like, because well, she was, yeah, well, yeah, she's straddling, she's him, straddling him, getting ready to, getting pound, ready to his you know, pound his face in, face in, and he, she's suddenly like over here, right? Because of course, no one hears the um, scarab talking. No one hears his armor talking. Yeah. Except, except for um, Jamie. Except for Jamie, he's the only person that 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 hears that. And of course, so he has conversations all the time with yeah. his armor, and the armor keeps registering him as being aroused by her. Yeah. Because, well, she's not hard. I mean, other than the. You know, freaky red stuff that comes Bat wings and the... She's pretty cool looking, though. Yeah. And she's, she's not bad looking. And so, of course, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah but registering went to bowl like a rose. Well, I, like, I am not a rose. rose. And he's, like, he's standing. I mean, he's going, sometimes the scarab pops out certain parts. Let's oh, yeah, he's covering himself up. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was pretty that funny, was too. That was really funny. Yeah. Well, they end up they end up having to set in a room together waiting for um yeah the Green Lantern to come back. Uh-huh. As they're, like, all really... Uncomfortable. Awkward, yeah. It was hilarious. Uh huh. It was it really was, funny. Yeah, that's what made this book not suck. Well, I don't. It hasn't sucked the last couple or issues. Or geez, not. But made it fun, made which is it what we missed. Which is made what we, it want, made us want to read it. Right. Which is what we missed about the whole mm -hmm. about the whole Blue Beetle. This yeah. this had a lot of those elements in it. It was fun. It was a good laugh. Um, yeah. I hope there's more of it. Yeah. You know, of course, they were just in here for this one shot. Now they're gone. Mm -hmm. They're they're off to fight some whatever problem. And so, and so obviously he's not, he was hoping to get training from the Green Lanterns to show him how to be a good superhero. Obviously, <laughs> that didn't work like, out for him. Nope. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, what would you rate it? Um, I'd give it a strong three. Three out of three. Three out of five. Three out of something. <gasps> ah, yay. yay. Okay. Um. What's next? Next we have Savage. What'd you think? You mean DC well, Universe presents Savage? Savage. Um. I really like this story. Um. I know it was really interesting. Uh, we get a daughter of um, Vandal Savage. Savage. You know, not 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 scandal. Not scandal, but another daughter. And this daughter is um, she works for the FBI as a um, serial killer profiler, mm -hmm. and she's very good at it. Yes. Well, some serial killer supposedly out there is mimicking supposedly Vandal, what Vandal Savage. Yeah, is in. supposedly how Vandal Savage was ended up, ended up in the prison that he's in now. Right. He's supposedly a serial killer because, of course, he still believes in the old gods and he does sacrifices to the old gods. Mm -hmm. Somebody's copying, copying that. that. And the FBI thinks the best person to get to convince him to... Well, because he hospitalizes his last people. <laughs> in the last ages that last showed up, he like, balls. Hey, well, 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 yeah. yeah. He's in Blackgate. Uh -huh, right. Yeah, he's in Blackgate. Arms. He's not in. He's not in. Um, Arkham. Arkham. He's in Blackgate. <gasps> They're not in Gotham. No, no. Blackgate's in Gotham. Too, Blackgate's in Gotham. I'm pretty sure it is. Never mind. It's just. A, it's not the Looney Bin. It's just. I the was just. I was security. just going to be surprised because everything leads back to Gotham. Well, of course it does. Anyway, really, yeah. really enjoy this. It's an interesting first issue. It's kind of a. I don't know. Quasi Silence of the Lambs. Not that you've seen that. But, I know what it is, though. Right. It's kind of like that, but not really, because she, she's not that intimidated by her dad. She's more just pissed off by him. Yeah. She doesn't really believe that he's immortal, even though he hasn't aged a lick. Mm -hmm. She just thinks that's good genes and whatnot. Um, there was a breakout right before she went in, we find out, yeah. and that killer is hiding in the room with Vandal, with Savage. Vandal Savage and her. And he kind of hints at the last second, and he comes jumping down, and she whoops out her gun and blows the guy away. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. So, you know, they're dodging her, and he's shooting her, and he's... Because he's got powers. Yeah, because he's he got, has powers, and he's, he has all electrical powers. powers. So she tosses coffee at him, which right. is amazing. Vandal, I knew as soon as she yeah. set down that coffee, I'm like, yeah, I bet the coffee's going to yeah. come in. Vandal, Vandal starts to warn her about the fact that he's right? electrobased, and she's like, and she's yeah, like, yeah, 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 I know. No. And she splashes in his face, so as he's frying himself, she's... Yeah, as he's oh, like having him. Well, as he short circuits, just shoots him through the head. Right, as as he short circuits, so he can't yeah. attack her. It's not like it really zaps him so much as it just keeps him from using his power. And she does not hesitate to kill him. Yeah. She does. I mean, she puts a hole through him. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. But I really like it. I, I think uh, there's. I think there's much like much better than the last DC Universe presents. Oh well, yeah, that was that was awful. Um, it was horrible. Yeah, but um, no, this is cool. 
Um, I think there's one or two more issues of this is they Vandal's getting out of prison to under help. under her. That's part of the agreement under under her um, jurisdiction. Uh, ju yeah, her guardianship to um, track down this. Yeah, because. And he's happy as can be because supposedly now he's gonna get to. He's gonna get to bond time, with his time with his daughter. daughter. It's gonna be cool. He, it's a cool version of him. Yeah. He's not. I mean, he's an egomaniac, but he's not total egomaniac. You know, uh -huh. I mean, he, they do a very good job of making him be kind of a he scary guy. Looks, he definitely looks more caveman -y than I think he used to much. Well, I don't know. He's just got long hair and, and a beard and whatnot. And, I don't know. and he has. Broad shoulders and looks like a football player, except for the fact well, he's he a big, have he's the a big, he's a big dude, but he doesn't look like he looks in um, Demon Knights. He's not this gargantuan. No, he's not guy. huge. But yeah, anyway. Of course, once again, jumping back to Justice League because that's just, just my favorite topic. I liked the old the Vandal Savage and that who was this not skinny or gaunt necessarily, but this average but taller, muscular looking guy who wasn't. Extra buff or whatever. Yeah, but this, he, this version of him falls along oh, yeah, those yeah. lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm fine yeah. with this savage too. Yeah. I just like, I like that one too. Okay. What, what would you give this? Um, yes, I'd give it a four out of five. Yep, I give it a four out of five too. It was very enjoyable, and we're looking forward to the next next story. Mm -hmm. And last for this half, we're gonna talk Justice League number nine. Which okay, I so, um. First off, I was happy to see that they brought back a villain that they had in the um, last DC Universe, Key, because I like Key because I liked it when Key and John, well, Martian Manhunter, I guess, sorry, mm -hmm. um, or Key and Batman would have mental showdowns, because, I mean, obviously Key and John are both mind people, so they'd actually invade each other's minds, and then... Key and Batman would try and outsmart each other, so that was, it was, I was happy to see him, but as they get down to Key, they find out that Key has broken into Arkham Asylum, and they're trying to figure it out, out why, and as they he, get into he's it, deeper in, yeah. so he can hide there from whoever is getting ready to graves, who's getting ready to, what it seems like, try and kill the Justice League, so, um, yeah, he talks about how he needs to put his mind back together because um, somebody got in there and stole it from him. Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty scary because, as I previously said, he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Batman and John with his psychic powers. So. Yeah, he's pretty messed up right now. Yeah, yeah he definitely looks he's a, worse he's a definite, than He's a definite head case. There's some other funny things in this as they're breaking further into Arkham during this whole craziness that's going on. Yeah. Um, they're breaking further into Arkham, and Batman says he's brought a map along, mm -hmm. and Cyborg comes crashing down. He's the map. Yeah. And he's like, well, how do you know where all... And he keeps telling them where to go, and, and they're like, how do you know all this? And he goes, well, I tapped into, you know, all the maps, all the, computers. All the cameras. I know exactly where he's at. He's blah, 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 because I've, I've tapped into all the computers and all the cameras. And plus Batman has plus, tags on... Plus, Everybody. plus, yeah, plus yours, Batman. I, 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 I logged yeah, into your computer and your. To Batman's it's computer. Like, Wait a second. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hmm. So obviously there'll be some work done there. Yeah. Um, I think it's cool that they're making um, Cyborg a much bigger power player mm -hmm. than he used to be, or feeling that he used to be, and whatnot. Yeah, he's like um, more of a field agent than he used to be. Right. Um, but this whole thing with Graves, it could be interesting. Is he's slowly picking apart um, people? He's beating up Trevor's he horribly. He's the crap out of yeah. To try and figure out, you know, try and get at, to try and get at him. He wants up to, onto the satellites what he wants. Yeah. So, I don't know what kind of power this dude has or not. Yeah. You know, he shoots up his doctor when I mean, his doctor yeah, tells him he's terminal. Some, for some, whatever reason, he's pretty mad because, um... The Justice League can't, can't help save him. him. Whatever. I don't, I don't know. What do you think of the, um, backup story, the Shazam backup story? Oh, okay, that was, that was pretty cool. Um, I probably enjoyed this more than the story. Yay! Billy Batson didn't make me want to peel all over. Um, we actually got to see Billy have a little bit of personality, and watching him beat up the rich kid bullies was cool. And seeing how everybody kind of bends to the will of the rich kid people right. because they're funding the school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kids get free A's, whatever. 
you know, nobody messes with them because otherwise the school gets shut down or becomes a lot worse or whatever and everybody gets fired, so on and so forth. So, and it's cool seeing Billy not be afraid to mess with those people. Of course, I know Billy's kind of a punk anyway, so I guess it's not saying much. And then, but watching his foster dad stand up for him, that was cool too. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm happy, and I'm starting to see how Billy could actually become Shazam. Right. He's not that, I mean, he's, he, all this, you know, now we're starting to see that maybe the way he acts with everybody is kind of a defense mechanism. Uh -huh. I don't want any family, because of course, if you don't have any family, you have to worry about, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But obviously, he's not going to allow people to get bullied and of course so he thumps on the you know like you say he thumps on the rich kids and um um yeah that was cool yeah that his stepdad he basically throws himself into the fight too yeah. when it comes down to it so so he you know maybe he's gonna see that look not everybody is a total, to get him? Uh -huh. is a total creep or not i don't know I, I i would have liked if this would have been its own book Instead of a backup story, so we can get to it faster. Yes. Let's get to the cool that stuff faster. That would have been nicer if it had been its own yeah. book, but let's, that's okay. Let's get to the cool stuff faster because it's sure taking an awful long time to get the cool stuff right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I am the main Justice League book. Oh, yeah, and then the end, what's his face? Savannah. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. For yeah. So we're um, going to. For gonna, some reason, Savannah has. We're going to start popping up the. Eye. We're going to start popping up the bad guys here pretty yeah. soon. So that'll be interesting to see what goes on there. But I don't know, as far as the whole the Justice League book itself, I don't know. It was, it wasn't bad, but it was kind of a yawn or two. Yeah, I don't know. I just wasn't. A, I wasn't. Three, like, just a three. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like ant three. It was like I said. It wasn't bad. Um, There's nothing about it made me upset or anything, but it was rather mediocre. Yeah. I I really haven't really dug a whole lot of the Justice League. Books, Not really. Me either. Which is pretty frustrating since I it should be one of the books that everybody's excited about. Yeah. Which just leads me into, I, I'm still not real sold on the fact that Jeff Johns is that great of a writer. He's like, oh my gosh, she did such wonderful things with Justice Society. Oh my gosh, she did such wonderful things with Teen Titans. Oh my gosh, she did such wonderful things with, with the Green Lantern. Whatever. Yeah. At any rate. Um, I, I, you know, I think you should put people in the book that is hungry and, and, and their job depends on them doing a great book. Mm -hmm. He's got another job. Yeah. So, it could be mediocre and he can get away with it. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, maybe that's a judgment on his character that I shouldn't make. Anyway, I guess. That's it for this half. We'll be back in a little bit with the second half of the books. Yep.